The extreme value theorem is an important property of continuous functions. It states that a function f which is continuous on a closed interval from a to b attains its minimum and maximum values on that interval. In the case of this function f whose graph is the green curve shown in the picture, the minimum value is attained at the point x equals e and the maximum value at x equals d. We prove this result by reviewing first the definition of continuity. A function f is continuous at x equals a if for all positive numbers epsilon one can always find a positive number delta such that whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus f at a is less than epsilon. Continuous functions have the following important property that has been observed already earlier. If f is continuous at x equals a, then limit of f at xn as n approaches infinity is f at a for all sequences xn with limit a. This theorem is in fact an if and only if condition for continuity. But here we need only this part of the statement. So if f is continuous, then the limit of f of xn is f at a for all sequences xn with limit a. A function f is continuous on an open interval if it is continuous at each point of that interval. A function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b if it is continuous on the corresponding open interval from a to b and left continuous at b and right continuous at a. This simply means that the right hand limit of the numbers fx as x approaches a through numbers larger than a must be the value of f at a. And likewise the left hand limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left hand side must be f at b. We start by the observation according to which a function which is defined and continuous on a closed interval has a bounded range. To prove this we consider a function defined on the interval from a to b, closed interval. We have to show that the set of the values of the function f is a bounded set. If this set is not bounded from above, then it means that f takes arbitrarily large values on the closed interval from a to b. This means that for any number n we can find a point xn in the closed interval from a to b such that the value of the function f at this point xn is larger than n. Now the sequence xn is bounded because each xn is between a and b. bolzano weierstrass theorem then implies that this sequence xn has a monotonic subsequence. We denote this monotonic subsequence by xnk. The sequence x and k is monotonic and bounded. Therefore, it has a limit. So the limit of the sequence x and k as k approaches infinity is some point c, and since each xn is between a and b, also the limit is between a and b. The limit may be a, it may be b, or it may be an interior point. The function f is continuous. That was our assumption. Therefore, limit as k approaches infinity of f evaluated at x and k is the same as f evaluated at the limit point. But the limit point was the point c. Therefore, by the definition of limits, there is an index at k1 such that whenever k is larger than this index number k1, then f at x and k is less than c plus 1. 
But this is not possible, since we assume that f at x n k is larger than n k, and since limit of the numbers n k as k approaches infinity is the infinity. So this is not possible, and this means that um, the set of the values of f is bounded from above. Now we may apply this argument to the function negative of f to show that the set of values of the function f is bounded also from below. And therefore we conclude that the set of the values of f on the closed interval from a to b is bounded. The extreme value theorem for continuous function states that a function which is continuous on a closed interval from a to b attains its maximum and minimum values on that interval. Here we have the graph of a function f which is continuous on the closed interval from a to b. It has local maximum point at x equals c and at x equals d and the value of f at x equals d is larger than the value of f at x equals c Therefore, we conclude that x equals d is a global maximum point. And then there's a local and global minimum value point at x equals e. In this picture, we have the graph of a function which is not continuous at x equals c. This function takes arbitrarily large values on the interval from a to b it does not attain its maximum value, it does attain its minimum value, which is zero at x equals c, but uh, otherwise the function f here in this picture, the red curve, takes arbitrarily large values, and this is possible because the function is not continuous at x equals c. We prove the extreme value theorem, which states that a function f which is continuous on a closed interval from a to b attains its extreme values on that interval. We prove it by first showing that the function f attains its maximum value on the interval from a to b. To prove this, we first recall that we now know that the range of the function f is a bounded set because the function f is continuous. So the range is bounded and this means that it has a finite supremum s which is uh, the least upper bound of this set of the values of the function f. So this is now some finite number. By the properties of supremum, by the properties of the least upper bound, we can find for any number n, a point xn in the interval from a to b, such that f evaluated at xn is larger than s minus 1 over n. This is a characterization of the supremum. The supremum of the set is a number such that arbitrarily close to that number there are points in the set. So we consider this sequence xn, and we use bolzano weierstrass theorem, which says that this sequence xn, which is a sequence in the interval from a to b, has a monotonic subsequence, and this monotonic subsequence converges. So we have a converging subsequence xnk by bolzano weierstrass theorem. Let C be the limit of this monotonic converging subsequence X and K. Since each X and K is between A and B, also C is between A and B, so C is the point in the closed interval from A to B. For all K we have that S, which was the supremum of the set of values of F, is of course at least F at C. But F at C is f at the limit as k approaches infinity of x and k. 
but this is now the same as the limit as k approaches infinity of the values of f at the points x and k. And this is because f is continuous. And the point x and k was chosen in such a way that the value of the function f at that point is larger than s minus 1 over nk. Since the nk's have the infinity as the limit, as k approaches infinity. This f at c must be s. So the function f attains its maximum value, it's the supremum of its range at the point c. And this completes the proof of the claim. We have now shown that the function f attains its maximum value on the interval from a to b. To show that it attains also its minimum value, we consider instead of the function f, the function negative of f. If f is continuous, then also negative of f is continuous, and we may now apply this argument to show that the function negative of f attains its maximum value on the interval from a to b. But the maximum value of the function negative of f is the minimum value of the function f. So by applying the same argument word by word to the function negative of f, we show that f attains also its minimum value on the interval from a to b. The proof is therefore complete. To summarize this, we assumed that f is a continuous function on a closed interval from a to b. If uh, that is the case, then f attains its maximum and minimum values on that interval. So there's a local maximum value point at x equals c and at x equals d in this case. x equals d is a global maximum value of f on the interval from a to b. Local and global minimum value for the function f on the interval from a to b is attained at x equals e. This is the extreme value theorem, an important tool. In many applications, we model a real phenomena by a function. If the function is continuous, if we, we know that it is continuous, we may try to optimize the process and try to find that point for which this function takes either its maximum or its minimum value. Important for applications.